women's uh, right. Uh, regarding other positive aspects that we see in this declaration is uh, the reiteration of commitment uh, to the rule of uh, uh, proportionality regarding the measures of uh, the pandemic, the necessity to be in full conformity with the European Convention on Human Rights, and been also under constant review. We, if we, we find also very important and useful that paragraph 10 of uh, the declaration stresses also the need to safeguard social rights and not just uh, the right uh, to health for all, but also for all other social and economic rights. And it makes a specific reference to the European Social Charter. And exactly because the period of the pandemic, it was not just a period of, uh, let's say, uh, dire trial for individual freedoms and political rights, but also for social ones, taking into account the explosion of social inequalities that took place in that. So I look forward to the discussion at uh, uh, the plenary, and uh, especially I'm looking forward to what uh, our colleagues from the countries coming uh, from uh, from the colleagues coming from these countries who have not signed what they have to say about the position of their government. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. We now we now move to our next speaker, who is Lord Buffy from the UK. You've got the floor. Uh, Lord Balfi, did you ask for the floor? If you didn't, please do so, then we can give you the floor. Lord Balfi. Okay, apparently we move on to the next one on my list is Mr. Cox from the Netherlands. Mr. Cox, Tini, you've got the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. And uh, uh, to follow up, uh, all was said by my uh, colleague, uh, George Catrugales, uh, indeed, uh, I think we all should be very happy that this, in, in times of, 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 of uh, crisis, our ministers were able to come up with this uh, Athens Declaration. And I think that is of main importance that today our standing committee will uh, welcome that uh, statement as well and to confirm that we agree with the main issues that were mentioned uh, there. Uh, I, I'm especially happy that uh, there is a full commitment to both European Convention on Human Rights by our ministers representing the governments and by the convention system. I may recall that recently I, I wrote a report on the on the the um, uh, the, the the period of um, the convention system ever since the founding of our organization. And overall, we should be very happy that now the ministers clearly say, yes, we do adhere to this convention uh, system. Uh, another issue that is, I think, very important, that our ministers were able to limit themselves uh, in this Athens Declaration in times of crisis. We see a lot of uh, member states taking exceptional measures, and it's understandable, but all these exceptional measures should be limited. Limited in time, limited in, the, in, in, in proportion, uh, limited in in, 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 in in the field to which they uh, they refer. Uh, the assembly already adopted after another crisis, the, the Bataclan uh, uh, massacre, a report that I proposed that in times of crisis, our answers should always be in conformity with the fundamental rights and and standards of the Council of Europe. This Athens Declaration emphasizes that that again, and I'm most happy that the uh, the ministers representing our governments clearly state that the role that our assembly plays uh, in this crisis uh, with the pr production of a very uh, relevant reports uh, uh, on the COVID crisis, but also overall. I think it shows that after a period uh, in which the cooperation between our ministers and assembly was not as good as it should be, it has improved especially also during this, uh, this, this crisis. So I want to thank the minister that they were able to come to this uh, declaration. I really pity that there are a few member states which still did not sign uh, this declaration, but I hope that they will do this as soon as possible because the Athens Declaration deserves to be a declaration of all 47 
member states. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Tini. I come back to Lord Bathy now. Richard, you have the floor. Okay, we'll go to the next one. We'll try to fix this with uh, Lobafe, with Richard. I now have Mr. Kairidis from uh, Greece. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, hi from Athens. I have uh, five points. First, I salute uh, the fact that uh, our Council, Council of Europe and our Assembly in particular, has continued its work, its valuable work, in the midst of an enormous uh, uh, crisis. Uh, this is very important for what we discuss here, the Athens Declaration. Now we have the chance to recommit ourselves to the high ideals of our institution in the midst of an unprecedented crisis created by the pandemic. Um, in this way, we send the most powerful signal that human rights and the rule of law are even more important and uh, precious uh, today. We do not back, uh, back or backpedal from our work. We recommit and we re-strengthen that uh, uh, work. Um, I would make a ref I would not refer to the naysayers in general, as an esteemed colleague of mine did just uh, before. I will restrict myself only to a reference to Hungary, as I wonder if this is really what the proud and historic Hungarian nation wants to be associated with, to be on the same side. Um, when it comes to democracy and freedom with Turkey and Azerbaijan. Is this uh, really what the ancestors of Prime Minister Viktor Orban fought for back in 1956 and what he and his people uh, tried to achieve back in 1989? I cannot help but wonder. Finally, I conclude with a mention to the vaccine and to the struggle and challenge we have ahead. Um, Science has done its duty, Mr. President. We have a vaccine, but a vaccine on its own won't save anyone. Only vaccination will and can do that. So after science comes the politics. And I urge all my colleagues to keep, to keep this in mind. After the vaccine, we need vaccination and the policy that will deliver it effectively to all to all our uh, uh, people all across uh, uh, Europe. And uh, with that, I would uh, uh, salute you uh, from uh, Athens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we have another try with Lord Balfi, Wojciech? Richard, let's try again. You've got the floor. Apparently, there's some kind of a bug bugging us. Uh, okay, we go now to uh, Nemeth Zolt from Hungary. Uh, Zolt, you have the floor. Thank you, Rick, uh, for the possibility. Uh, dear colleagues, two uh, colleagues have mentioned the name of Hungary. Hungary was, yes, among the countries who uh, could not uh, vote for the Athens Declaration. Uh, I would like to clarify the Hungarian position. Uh, we do support uh, the whole uh, spirit, the wording, but there was a drafting problem in the declaration. Uh, the Hungarian uh, permanent representative suggested that we should add two, two words, Istanbul Convention and relevant national measures are welcome to fight protection of women and so on. This uh, uh, adding the relevant national measures could not pass for some reason in the drafting process. Some countries like Hungary, uh, we have not yet ratified the Istanbul Convention. 
And for that reason, we don't want to give the impression that we don't care for women's rights. We do. The Hungarian system, we are ready to offer for investigation. There may be uh, uh, a system of conventions where some countries ratify and some countries don't ratify certain conventions. But I think it would be a big mistake to draw the conclusion that those countries are not uh, uh, recognizing human rights and democracy. And especially it would be a big mistake to draw the conclusion that that country is not able to chair the Council of Europe Committee of Ministers, as Mrs. Bayer did. I think we should distance ourselves from such kind of conclusions, early conclusions, because this harms the work of the Council of Europe in general for party political uh, uh, bashing of certain uh, opponents. I think we should distance ourselves from this kind of attitude. Thank you very much. To go to the clarification, I now have Madam Scow from Norway. But apparently she disappeared. Then I have Madam Martinez from Spain. You have the floor. Oh, se me escucha? Sí, Muy bien, muchas gracias. Eh, muchísimas gracias por concederme la palabra. Y eh, yo quería poner de manifiesto que en España estamos viviendo una situación un tanto difícil, eh, lamentablemente, en cuanto al Estado de Derecho. No solamente lo dice el Partido Popular, partido al que yo eh, pertenezco, sino sino que ha sido dicho también por la Comisión de Venecia y por el, la Comisión Europea, por el Comisario de Justicia. Y quería hablar de cuatro temas eh, en los que, por los que mi partido está preocupada. Primero, el estado de alarma de seis meses sin que haya un control parlamentario. El segundo es una proposición de ley sobre el nombramiento del Consejo General del Poder Judicial, que es el órgano de los jueces y del nombramiento de los jueces, que pretende pasarse de una mayoría forzada a una mayoría simple. Thank you. You can continue. Sí, sí, puede continuar, ningún problema. El tercero es el um, nombramiento del fiscal general del Estado de un ex diputada del Partido Socialista y que era ministra de Justicia y que pasó de ser ministra de Justicia a ser con fiscal general del Estado. En, en el mismo momento. Y la cuarta es una ley que se acaba de proponer sobre desinformación que, que basándose o apoyándose en la idea de las fake news, lo que, lo que pretende hacer es coartar de alguna manera la libertad de información, la libertad de prensa. Son cuatro temas fundamentales que yo sé que España ha firmado la declaración de Atenas, pero sobre las que quiero poner eh, en este foro de relevancia, porque creo que es importante que, que el alto nivel de protección de derechos humanos que hemos tenido países como España y uno de los países importantes dentro de la Unión Europea, que la sigamos manteniendo y que la sigamos eh, haciendo con muchísima atención. Eh, es verdad que vivimos circunstancias excepcionales que requieren medidas excepcionales, pero creo que tenemos que tener nuestros estándares más altos que nunca, más fuertes que nunca, para no permitir que, que las circunstancias excepcionales nos lleven a un detrimento en los derechos y en las libertades de los ciudadanos. Muchas gracias. Muchas sí, gracias a usted. Uh, we now come to, uh, do we already have a possibility of getting Lord Balfe on board? No, he's bugged out. Okay, I do apologize for that. Then we got our last speaker, which is uh, Mr. Yildiz from Turkey. Ahmed, uh, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the position of my country on this declaration is distorted by some speakers and the remarks by Greek colleagues amounted to a level of hate speech, unfortunately. Let me repeat here that Turkey has no problem with this declaration. We appreciate it, we accept it. In the Committee of Ministers, the problem was about the adoption procedure. We defended that the body should stick to established rules on the adoption procedure. That's it. My delegation and I personally here support this declaration and I congratulate Greek colleagues uh, for this good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, um, I do not have any other speakers on my list. Uh, maybe I can make one comment um, because in our next point we have a draft declaration uh, on the parliamentary contribution. Uh, I was present in Athens uh, during the debate um, and um, basically uh, the way I interpret what happened is that uh, a country or a number of countries um, basically had the idea that by approving the Athens Declaration that they would be perceived or in reality would also approve a number of convention that they not already have approved or would not have approved or did not even have signed. And we had some declarations by other countries saying so, and they did approve the Athens Declaration. I just wanted to add this uh, as an information to all of you, um, which is important because I will get into the details of that in our next point. Is there anyone else who wishes to have the floor on the current affairs debate? No. Then we go to number 11, which is the draft declaration on the parliamentary contribution to the Athens Declaration by the Committee of Ministers' Chairmanship on effectively responding to a public health crisis in full respect for human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Uh, you have seen the uh, declaration. There are no amendments to the declaration. It is an important one. Why? Because as I have been working on now for several months, uh, is the fact that we need or we try at least to synchronize, coordinate the efforts of the Committee of Ministers, the Secretary General and ourselves. This is reflected in the uh, draft declaration which I propose to you, uh, where we have in point eight um, the following sentence, taking into consideration all the above, these are the considerations from one to seven, the Assembly, this is us, welcomes the Athens Declaration by the Committee of Ministers' Chairmanship as well as the Secretary-General's Secretary Toolkit and resolve to continue working in close coordination and so on. I want to make one thing clear. Uh, the Athens Declaration is a document by the Committee of Ministers which has been in part, in large part, based on the five assembly reports on COVID that we have made. So we were very happy, and I told that to uh, the Committee of Ministers, that many of the issues that we have developed in the works of the Parliamentary Assembly to the substance have been really taken on board in the Athens Declaration. Uh, I also told the Committee of Ministers that once the Athens Declaration's debate would be over in the Committee of Ministers, that I would take it on board, propose to take it on board in the Parliamentary Assembly. Not for us to approve it, uh, because this is not our business. This is why in point eight we say we welcome the Athens Declaration, which basically means we welcome the fact that the Athens Declaration has taken on board so many of the issues that we have to the substance proposed to the Committee of Ministers, and we welcome the content of the Athens Declaration, uh, and may I maybe understand from the interventions during the current debate of our Turkish and Hungarian colleagues, this is exactly what they said, that they approve the content. Now, we do not approve uh, the Athens Declaration. We welcome it, which in my view means that we do not have any drafting or any other uh, problems on our table. So to me, it is important that the Parliamentary Assembly, by welcoming the Athens Declaration, uh, has an expression uh, as to adhering fully to the content 
and not getting into the debates of uh, the fact that one would or would not adhere to whatever. It is about the substance, the content of the Athens Declaration, including, including the fight against violence with regard to women, uh, which is a different debate than signing or approving or ratifying a convention. Now, um, what we did in the current affairs debate, uh, we basically promote and strengthen parliamentary action and support uh, the implementation as to the Athens Declaration standards. That is what it is all about. And it recalls uh, our own declaration, actions undertaken by our assembly, uh, and highlight also, we also highlight the importance of parliamentary scrutiny of all measures taken by the authorities when addressing the pandemic. I want to go into this issue because it was not evident that in the Athens Declaration, it would have been clear by the Committee of Ministers that they would acknowledge the fact that set aside from any measures in a crisis situation, such as a pandemic, would be temporarily, they would be pointed to uh, measures to the, to, to, to the cause, uh, but also that they should be under parliamentary scrutiny, which is in the Athens Declaration. This is essential, because here, the Committee of Ministers, so the Ministers, acknowledge that the scrutiny by the people of measures being taken in extraordinary situation is done by the Parliament, which is us. So this is quite uh, fundamental as far as I am concerned. And so, from my point of view, um, welcoming the Athens Declaration, as well as the toolkit of the Secretary General, both of them, um, is an expression of the content of these declaration and of the toolkit, which allow us in a further stage to elaborate on it in our workings and also to take it on board when we head out to national parliaments to explain. Uh, I do hope, uh, let me end by this, uh, that uh, all of the delegations can adhere to the welcoming of the Athens Declaration. Uh, I will put it to the vote. Uh, and also, uh, we have expressed uh, in the uh, declaration the fact that we include um, our Assembly special guest observers, Partners for Democracy, um, to join forces with the Assembly in this regard. So this is a short introduction I wish to make uh, as to the uh, substance of what the declaration that is on our table is all about. It is about welcoming the Athens Declaration and the toolkit as to the substance, and I do hope uh, that all of our colleagues um, can adhere to this. Uh, does anyone wish to have the floor um, as to the draft declaration on our parliamentary contribution to the Athens Declaration? I do not see so. Then I will put the declaration to the vote. Wojciech, um, if you can initiate the vote. Yeah. Sir President, the vote will be opened now very soon. And it's just to uh, remind all members who are present that only members with voting rights in the Standing Committee are invited to take part in the vote. In principle, all those members who now participate in the meeting who do not have voting rights will have no access to the voting system. So I invite just members with voting rights to proceed to polls and to take part in the vote. Thank you, President. Okay. Okay, the vote is open. Please vote. One minute, please vote.
15 seconds. Yeah, we have to keep some suspense here. Okay, the vote is closed. Can I have the result, please? Okay, I see only green, so I am quite except if I'm mistaken, no? So I see 26 in favor, no one against and no abstentions. May I say that I'm proud and happy that the Parliamentary Assembly in a unanimous way welcomes the Athens Declaration as well as the toolkit of the Secretary General. I think this is a great result that shows that all of us adhere to the fundamental values uh, that we are supposed to uphold and defend. Thank you very much for this nice result in the morning session. We will reconvene at 2.30. Thank you very much.